Good morning, church. Good morning. On this, the last Sunday in the month of October, the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, we are here again to give God all the honor, glory, and praise. Amen. Amen. So let us begin with the call to worship. Please stand. Come, let us praise the Lord. Let us have songs of thanksgiving. For God has done wonderful things for us. God's love and blessings have been shared. Come, let us praise the Lord. Let us sing songs of great joy to God. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is My Hope is Built. Hymn number 368. Yes, let us say our opening prayer together. Lord, we gather here this day in praise and thanksgiving for all the wonderful things you have done for us. Help us to be faithful disciples in all that we think, do, and say, that your great love may be revealed and offer healing to all people. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to lift up our prayer concerns and our responses. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Mm -hmm. 
praying for the, the Tiller family, Jennifer Tiller and the loss of her, Tyler, the loss of her friend, is our friend or daughter? Is it our friend or our daughter, Jennifer Tyler, our sister? So we're lifting up Jennifer Tyler's sister who passed away on yesterday. And we pray for God's comfort and, and strengthen that family through their time of bereavement. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear my prayer. David Thomas, who passed away from COVID complications, God brings solace to that family during their time of bereavement. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We're lifting up the Shepherd family, Sister Shepherd, Sister Allison. We're lifting them up during this difficult time as they mourn the loss of their loved one, Sister Esther. Lord, in your mercy. Mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Any other prayer concerns? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayers. I wish you big man. And we're also going to lift up all those that are suffering with cancer, any form of cancer, breast cancer, brain cancer. And we're praying that they will find a cure for that deadly disease. Lord. Lord, in our mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray. Merciful and everlasting God, we come before you this day filled with loss and filled with grief and filled like there is no hope. But God, we come before you, God, because you are our hope and our hope is in you. And so God, we give you thanks. Oh God, for the many families that are grieving on this day, we ask that you be their comforter. We ask that you be their advocate. We ask that you be their helper, oh God, during these difficult times. Father, we pray that you strengthen and touch the shepherd family. We pray, oh God, that you comfort them while they're going through their grieving, while they're going through their mourning. Father, we ask that you comfort Sister Shepherd, Sister Allison, and the husband, and the other family members, oh God, of Sister Esther. Be with the friends and relatives who are going to come near and far, oh God, for the funeral service on tomorrow. Guide and bless each and every one of us, oh God, who is just still going through something, oh God. And, and we haven't even whispered it, but there are many people that are still suffering many people that are still sad and so we're also lifting up the family of jennifer tyler we pray that you continue to bring comfort to that family as well as as she mourns the loss of her sister and we're lifting up mr david thomas oh god his family oh god you are 
a healer. You are an ever-present help in the time of trouble. You are the one that gives us shelter. You are the one, oh God, who gives us light when in this midst of this darkness. God, we ask, oh God, that you just lift up all hung down heads. We pray, oh God, that you wipe away every tear, oh God, that falls through the night. Help them to lean on you. Help them to rely and depend on you. So God, we're also praying for this nation, oh God. We're praying for this state. We're praying, oh God, as we're still in this pandemic and people are still dying from COVID-19. We're praying, oh God, that many people, oh God, will be patient, oh God, to do what they need to do in regards to the vaccine. We're praying, oh God, for the heads of government. We're praying for the president and the vice president and the cabinet, his administration. We're praying, oh God, for all the leaders, oh God, all the uh, officials, oh God, in the community, oh God. We, we're praying, oh God, for even for this mayoral race on Tuesday, on election day. Oh God, we're praying for the bishop, the district superintendent, the clergy, oh God, the pastors, the leaders of the United Methodist Church. We're praying for the laity. Strengthen us, oh God, during this difficult time. And so God, as we're gathered here today, oh God, we give you thanks, God, because you are the Prince of Peace. You are our perpetual light. You are our everlasting hope. So even though while we may be sad and we're grieving, God, we're still here, oh God, to lift your name on high. So have thine own way in this service today, oh God. Touch each and every one of us, oh God. Touch the musicians, touch the media team. Touch even me, oh God, as I shepherd the flock here at this church. Strengthen us and bless us, oh God. And so that when everything is done and said, you get the utmost honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And our prayer response Amen. is through it all. So let us stand and sing through it all, hymn number 507. When I, because when I came in Thursday, he was going down there. Mm -hmm. And then Nedra, yesterday I was talking to Nedra. Trust in Jesus 
I have learned to trust in God. Amen? Amen. Please be seated. Good morning again, everybody, and welcome those that are on Zoom, those that are listening in, and those that have pressed their way to be in the center today. I bring you greetings from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if anyone that is on the call for the first time, we welcome you. We welcome you with the love of Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. So as a way of announcement, we, we regret to announce the passing of Sister Leslie Shepherd's daughter, uh, Esther Halley Waller. And the funeral service is tomorrow, and it will be held at Union United Methodist Church, which is our sister church right down the block from us, 121 New York Avenue at the corner of Dean and Bergen, and Bergen Avenue. The viewing is from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, and the funeral service will follow right after. So we're asking for those who can make it to please come out and support um, the Shepherd family at the funeral service. So, and we will continue to keep, please continue to keep Sister Shepherd family in our thoughts and prayers. Amen. We're going to have a nominations meeting this Thursday, November 4th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. And then we'll have our church council meeting on the next Thursday, November 11th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. And so we're getting ready for our church conference, which is scheduled for Saturday, November 27th at 10 p.m with Bushwick Parish via Zoom. And the Zoom information will come as soon as the date is near. And once I reach, receive those, that information, I'll get it and send it to everybody. So in the meantime, just please continue to submit all your reports to Sister Starks in preparation for the charge conference. Praise the Lord. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And so today is the last Sunday in the month of October, and we'll be collecting a special donation for breast cancer awareness today. So I'm asking everyone to please uh, put a special offering for breast cancer today during our tithes and offering. Praise God. I would like to personally thank the members for their diligence, their faithfulness, and their commitment um, from last year until now, we have really been united together as one in regards to contributing, in regards to giving your offerings and your tithe. And so God is doing a good thing for us because God is good and he's good to us all the time. We were oppressed and we had struggled with not having a tenant for over a year. And so we give God thanks that we were able to have a new tenant um, beginning last month. That new tenant had, uh, had, had, is going to be on the third floor. But needless to say, without having a tenant, uh, the way that we have come together as a body, as a body of Christ to do what we need to do to be able to maintain being here at the corner, to be able to pay our, our bills. And so we give God thanks. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you personally to the members, to the friends of Bethel, for the supporters who support us along this way, because we have a trying year and we're still in this pandemic. And so my prayer for everyone that is listening on Zoom, as well as those that are in the sanctuary, that we continue to have that mindset to put Christ first, to trust in God, to believe in God, because when we do that, miracles can happen. Miracles will happen. And so it has been a wonderful year with our finances, uh, that how we're able to pay off these bills. And then next year, our apportionment fund has been reduced 
at least by half. So I want to say just thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone and give yourself a round of applause because it was not easy, but we did it and we are going to continue to do what we need to do to be able to be the light at the corner. Amen? Amen. Sister Starks, do you want to say something with regards to that? You can come up. That's Good morning, church. I think the pastor said it all, but I just want to say as finance chair and Sister Langley as the treasurer that we really worked hard in trying to pay the bills and keep them on time and keep our taxes paid. And off the top of my head, I can say we had a great finance meeting and we paid really taxes last year. We were behind $11,000. That is an applause for yourself. And that we, we covered that and, 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 I, and I was just truly amazed. And, and also the fact that we had our virtual programs and we didn't do the way that we, do, we usually do when we're in person, but for that we raised $896. So we hope that this year coming that would be more profitable and that we can really get ahead of ourselves and really focus on the learning the word and being here celebrating Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Starks. Amen. And thank you to the Finance Committee who works diligently throughout the whole year, Sister Lenley, Sister Starks, Sister Hattie, Sister Brenda, and for their due diligence. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The word of the week. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up. O ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Psalm 24, verse 7. And we'll continue with our prayer and Bible study on Tuesday, Tuesday evening from 8 o'clock to 9 p.m. via Zoom. What happened? I know it's election day, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens on Tuesday. We're supposed to discuss Exodus chapter 24 and 25. So we'll see what happens on Tuesday. Amen? We'll continue. At this time, please pass the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Amen. We'll continue with our worship service with the ministry of the word. Everyone together, help us. Amen. The gospel reading is coming from Mark chapter 12, verses 28 to 34. I'm skipping. I'm sorry. The Old Testament reading is coming from Ruth chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. And then the epistle reading, Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 to 14, which will be read by Sister Starks. Please adhere to the reading of God's holy word. The scripture readings has been mentioned and I give honor to God and recognizing our pastor. We began with Ruth chapter one, verses one through 18. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land and a certain man in, of Bethlehem and Judah went to live in the country of Moab. He and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimamash, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Marlon and Chilion. 
they were Ephronites from Bethlehem in Judea. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and he, she was left with two sons, these two Moabites' wives. The name of the one was Oprah, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there about 10 years, both Malon and Chilion also died, so that the women was left without their two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughter-in-laws from the country of Moab, for she had heard the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughter-in-laws, go back each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord granted that you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them and they wept aloud. They said to her, no, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, turn back my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back my daughters, go your way. For I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept again, loud again. Oprah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, see your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to your God, her God, return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from the following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus so to me and more as well. If even death parts me from you, when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. This is the reading of the Lord. Yes. Thanks be to God. We'll continue with Hebrew chapter 9 verses 11 through 14. Mm -hmm. But when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and perfect tent not made with hands, that is not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of the goats and the calves, but with his own blood, thus attaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls with the sprinklings of the ashes of a heifer sanctify those who have been defiled so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ? How much more will the blood of Christ, excuse me, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from, the, from dead and work to worship the living God. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Thank you. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel reading is coming from Mark chapter 12, verses 28 to 34. Mark 12, verses 28 to 34. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one and besides him, there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. The word of God for the people of God. We have our children here today, and so we're going to have a, a brief children's moment. So I'm just going to ask the children um, to come quickly on the altar. Let us welcome the children that are here today. Amen. Amen. So I'm just going to speak briefly, children, on the word suffering. When you hear that word, what, what comes to your mind? Suffering. Um, oh, sorry. Give them the mic. Yeah. Which one? This one? I speak in the, through the, the mask. Uh, pain yeah. and struggle. Pain and struggle. Very good. What else? Um. Okay. Lelani, do you, do you want to say something? Somebody trying to kill you slowly and painfully as possible. Somebody tried to kill you slowly, painfully. As, uh, yeah, that's suffering. That is suffering. Praise God. Amen. 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 That's good. Anyone else? Pablo, you think you can? No? All right. Saraya? A spider biting you in your sleep? That, that, that is suffering. Yes. So if a spider, these are children from all of the mounts of babes. If a spider bit any one of us, we suffer from a spider bite because, you know, it's poisonous. Very good. Amen. 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 Okay. <laughs> so today we have someone that is not here today. And who is that person that is not here today? Always represents the children at Bethel. Estelle, right? And as young people, you go through suffering, right? A spider bites you painfully, dead, slowly dying. You suffer because adults suffer. But 1 Corinthians 12, verse 26 says, if one member suffers, someone read that. Pablo, please read that and read it loud. Give him the mic. If one member suffers, all suffer, all suffer together with it. If one, if one member is honored, all rejoice to, to, uh, all rejoice together with it. Very good, very good. What does that mean, um, Perusha? Okay. Uh, it means that if somebody, like, if somebody. If something happens to somebody, then 
we're all like, I don't know. Just saying it, go on, come yeah. Uh, we're all like, Say you all feel it. Do you feel sad when your friends are sad? Yes. Yes. So you're suffering with them. And that's what the scripture is saying. When your friends are happy, do you feel happy for them? Yes. Yes. Right. So that's what the scripture is saying. If one member suffer. So what are we going to do for Estelle as friends of Estelle? What are we going to do? Pray. Pray for her. What else? Uh, um, hope she's doing well hope she's doing well what else would you do if a member that you know that is suffering how can you reach out to her call her call her and you can also write a card right and send it to her let her know that we are thinking of her that you all are thinking of her right because she's suffering so if one member suffer we all suffer praise god and at the same time when you rejo if one member rejoice because there are times when we're gonna all rejoice you're gonna what what are you gonna do when one member rejoice we're gonna all be happy we're gonna all be happy praise god amen 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 so let us say a prayer for the children amen anyone want to close out in prayer no, 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 no. Lelani, you want to close out and pray? No, okay. All right, let us, <laughs> let us pray. Most gracious and everlasting God, we thank you for children. We thank you that we have children in Bethel, oh God, because they are the future generation. So God, we thank you, God, for this brief word, uh, letting us know that when one member suffer, we all suffer. When one member rejoice, we all rejoice. So at this time, oh God, we pray for Sister Estelle. We pray, oh God, that you touch her, that you comfort her during her suffering. Let her know, oh God, that we are thinking about her, that we love her. And so we welcome her. We can't wait when she comes back again here in service today. Amen. So God, we thank you for all that you're doing. Continue strengthening the children here at Bethel. Continue to raise them up, oh God, as good disciples, as good leaders. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus loves the little children. <laughs>
seated. Amen. More love to thee, O Christ, more love to thee. Hear thou the prayer I make on bended knee. This is my earnest plea. More love, O Christ, to thee. More love to thee. More love to thee. Amen. Amen. My message for today is called Return to Our First Love. And I'll be coming from the Old Testament reading in Ruth chapter 1, verses 1 to 18, and the gospel reading in Mark chapter 12, verses 28 to 34. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you, God, for everything that you're doing. We thank you, oh God, for bringing solace and peace to us right now. So God, at this time, I ask that you continue to touch me, that you continue to use me. Oh God, I pray, oh God, that everything that is done and said will bring honor to your name. So touch me, oh God, and anoint me afresh. Breathe the fresh anointing upon me. I pray, oh God, that they receive the proclaimed word. And so when everything else is done and said, God, you always get the utmost honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Do we remember what it was like when we fell in love for the first time? There were butterflies in our stomachs, or we may get nervous or axially around that person. We find ourselves not acting right because we are so in love with that person. Tina Turner has a song that says, what's the famous song? That's right, Sister Allison. What's love got to do with it? And if we watch that movie, we know our story and about that first love, which we'll still talk about to this day. There could be heartache and pain when we fell in love with that first love. But church, I'm here to tell you that there is one first love that does not give us any heartache and pain. Amen? There is this first love that takes care of his own, who is our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. The Lord takes care of his people. God loves us so much that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life as mentioned in John 3 16. Aren't we glad church that we have a God that loves us so much even when we fail, God still loves us. And what God requires from us, church, is to love him as how he loves us. The first commandment that God gave Moses in Exodus 20 verse 1 was, you shall not have any other gods before me. And this means that we should not worship any false gods or idols, but we should worship only our Lord thy God. Amen? We need to return to our first love church. If we have wandered astray, we should return to the very first love of our lives. In the Old Testament reading of Ruth chapter 1, we learned of three women who lost their first love. It tells us that a certain man whose name was Elimech, and he was from Bethlehem of Judah, and he had a wife whose name was Naomi. They had two sons. One was named Malon, and the other was named Chilion. And it says that they were Ephratites from Bethlehem in Judah. They were from a place that worshipped the one and true living God that is Bethlehem in Judah. 
but there was a famine in the country. So the husband Helamek decided to leave his homeland and resided in the country called Moab. According to Genesis chapter 19, verses 37 to 38, Moab was the first son of Lot's and Lot's elder and younger daughter after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. You remember, church, that Lot was the nephew of Abraham? And so the Moabites were family of the Israelites. They were related, but they were looked down upon by the Israelites, and they did not have a good relationships with them. So they were always fighting. The Moabites also worshipped many false gods. But Elamek resided in the country of Moab because there was a famine in Bethlehem. However, he died, and Naomi was left with their two sons. The two sons took Moabite women as their wives. One was called Orpah, and the other was called Ruth. But after 10 years, both sons died. Naomi was left in a predicament church. Here she became a widow, and now both of her sons had died. Naomi's security had vanished by the loss of her husband and her two sons. But then for her to be secure was if she remarried. But Naomi was up in age, so the prospects of her being remarried was not available for women during those times. However, church, it says in verse 6 that she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab because she heard that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. The famine was over in Bethlehem, and Naomi began to return to her homeland, to her first love. Amen? This tells us, church, that in life we're going to experience some hardships and pains, which includes losing a loved one. We may find ourselves in a good place, but some things will happen to us unexpectedly. We will be in a place where there is complete dryness. And this is the time where we are away from God. But it shows that whenever we are in a dry place, where we feel as if there is a famine in the land, where we feel so lost and empty, God still considers his people. Amen. And that is when we ought to return to the place in which we draw ourselves close to God. God will open doors for us, even when we think they could never be open, because God still consider us, and God still remember his people. Praise God. So Naomi was in a predicament. She was old, and she did not have any man in the house that could have provided for her and her two daughters-in-law. For this reason, she told Ruth and Oprah, to return to their country of Moab, to go back to their mother's house so that the Lord could deal kindly with them. Naomi's concern was for Ruth and Oprah to have security. She knew that she was too old to have a husband. And even if she had remarried and bore children, it will be too late for them to wait until the sons got older for them to remarry. So Naomi was reasoning with Oprah and Ruth and pleaded with them to not to go with her to Bethlehem. Naomi felt bitter and raw. She felt that God had not dealt kindly with her. When Naomi first asked them to return to their country, they both cleaved to her. And it shows the love that they had for Naomi. It shows that she was a great mother-in-law. Amen. But Naomi pleaded with her daughters-in-laws again to go back to their mother's house in the country Moab so that they could remarry and have security in the society during that time. Naomi was able to convince Oprah 
And so she returned to her home country in Moab. However, Ruth did not leave with her sister-in-law. Ruth clung to Naomi. Naomi again tried to convince Ruth to go back to Moab, but Ruth replied in verse 16, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Ruth was willing to be a foreigner in a strange land with her mother-in-law. She decided to become a migrant. We see in the news what is going on with the migrants coming over in this country. And they are with their families trying to get into this country. It is a yearly thing that has become an issue, a major crisis in the United States of America. But here we're seeing in the book of Ruth that Ruth was willing to Turn to a place where Naomi's God lies. She must have heard about the true and living God from her mother-in-law and her husband. She must have seen how Naomi worshiped God and how they revered God, that she was ready, Ruth was ready to fall in love with the God that Naomi served. Amen. She knew now that God provided for all of their needs. And so Ruth made a vow and said in verse 17, where you die, I will die. There will I bury it. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well, if even death parts me from you. She was determined to be with Naomi, to serve the God that Naomi served and be with her all the days of her life, even until death. Ruth's devotion to her mother-in-law church was loving thy neighbor as we love ourselves. Praise God. In the lectionary reading of Mark 12, verses 28 to 34, we learned that one of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him about which commandment is the first of all. Jesus replied, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, which is the first commandment of the Ten Commandments. But Jesus added that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Church, when we worship the true and living God, we are loving the Lord our God with all of our minds, souls, and strength. Our worship is giving thanks and praise to all the wonderful things that God has done for us. Amen. Psalm 146 verses 1 to 2 says, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. For God has been too good to us, church. God has been too good to us. So we worship God for who God is. And whatever situations that comes our way, we must still find time to worship God, to love God with all of our minds, souls, and strength. Returning to our first love church is spending time in devotion, meditating on God's word day and night. Amen. Returning to our first love church is praying to God without season. Returning to our first love church is doing this. Do not worry about anything, but in everything in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, glory to God. Let your requests be made known unto God, as says in Philippians 4, 6. Praise God. We need to return to our first love. So Jesus answered them correctly. He let the scribes know that God is number one and she'll be the only number one person in all of our lives. Then he responded in Mark 12, verse 31, the second commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourselves. There is no other commandment greater than these. Yes, praise the Lord. John Wesley emphasized on this doctrine, loving God first, then loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. And that is the hallmark of being a United Methodist. He said that there is no personal holiness 
without scriptural holiness, which means that we could go to church and we can do all the spiritual doctrines, studying the word of God, reading scripture, fasting, worship, devotion. But if we don't love our neighbors by being compassionate, showing acts of mercy and kindness, they are all in vain. In this month, Church of October, where it's known as Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we're loving those people in our communities who are fighting with this disease, as well as those who have survived this disease, both men, women, young and old. And so we love those who have passed on to glory. And we honor them in this constant fight for getting a cure for this disease. Amen? Loving our neighbors as our, ourselves is contributing towards breast cancer research and for the other cancer research. It is going on cancer walks and to bring awareness for this disease. If we truly, really imagine church, the love of God, that same love that God has for us, if we truly, really imagine, that is how we should treat our neighbors, by loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. That same love that God has for us. Amen? The scribe was pleased with Jesus' response and told him that to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more important than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices as it is mentioned in verses 32 to 33. Back then, they used to burn animals such as lambs and rams and, and goats and offer them as a sacrifice to God. So Jesus also saw that the scribe answered wisely and said to him that you are not far from the kingdom of God. He was one of the few scribes church who received the good news of Jesus Christ. And he saw and he received what Christ was doing to the world. After Jesus' response to the scribe, the scripture said, no one dared to ask him any question. Praise God. We need to return to our first love. If we have wandered or strayed away, we should return to the very first love of our lives. We need to get back to that joy and excitement when we first accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. How excited we were and we couldn't keep it to ourselves. Uh, we knew who we were. We knew who we belonged to because we were so in love with Jesus. Amen. This is how we need to be when we return to our first love. That when we are in trouble, we can call on the name of Jesus. We know our first love, Jesus Christ, will come right and be there with us in our time of need. He is only a prayer away. When we call on Jesus, Jesus will wipe every tear from our eyes. He will mend our broken hearts. Psalm 30 verse 5 says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning light. So let us get back to that place of returning to our first love. Let us get back to that place of worshiping God. Let us get back to the place of knowing who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let us get back to the place knowing that our Redeemer liveth. So my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Let us get back to our first love, whose name is Jesus Christ. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Romans 10 verse 9 says, if we confess with our lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. And so at this time, we're preparing for a hymn of invitation. And if anyone does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, this is the time that you come. 
Anyone on the call that doesn't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is the time that you can lift up your hands and we will pray. Amen. As Naomi and Ruth and Oprah, three women who lost their first love. What was special about Ruth? She really admired her mother-in-law and she had that love and admiration for her. And so that spark that Naomi had, she passed it on to Ruth. And Ruth passed on that spark because from that lineage come Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so we're going to stand and sing, pass it on. And we're going to pray that God will help us to pass it on that spark. So let us prepare our hearts for prayer. Does anyone would like to come to the altar during this time? The altar is open. If not, remain in your seats. Praise God. Amen. Oh God, we give you thanks for the words that went forth. We give you thanks, oh God, that you are our first love. Oh God, we ask that you help us, oh God, to return to you. Father, forgive us, oh God, for being astray, for being led astray. And we ask, oh God, that you give us the strength, oh God, to return to you, to return to do the things that we need to do to stay closer and closer to you. So God, at this time, I ask that you continue to give us the spark, oh God, to keep the fire burning. Help us, oh God, to pass on your love that you have uh, grant us and blessed us with. Help us, oh God, to pass that same love to our neighbors, oh God. Help us to love our neighbors as ourselves. 
Father, we are praying, oh God, for the once again for the shepherd family. We pray, oh God, that you just wrap your arms around them and comfort them. We pray, oh God, that love will be showed upon them, that goodness and graciousness shall follow them all the days of their lives. And so, Father, we're also praying for those who do not know you as their Lord and Savior. And if there was anyone who was on the call or even in the sanctuary, oh God, who desired to have a closer walk with you, who desired to accept you as their Lord, Father, I pray that you touch that person right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, I pray that you give them boldness and to have the confidence to know you personally in their life. Help us to develop a deep bond oh god help us oh god to have the love of a deep relationship with you help us oh god to continue to grow in faith and trust and in wisdom strengthen us in all thy ways oh god continue to order our steps in your word father thank you oh god for being that great prince of peace so father we bless you god we treasure you we treasure what you're doing right now at this time we treasure your sweet, sweet spirit that is in this place. Father, we treasure everything that you are doing and, and the miracles that you're doing for Bethel and what you're continuing to gonna do for this church. Continue to give us new ideas, new dreams, new visions, and new hope. Be with us as a community. Be with us, oh God, as a church, as one. Bless us and keep us forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with our prayer of confession. Everyone together, let us say that prayer of confession. How often, O oh Lord, have we believed that the greatest commandment is our love for ourselves solely. We have not heard the cries of those in need. We have turned our backs on opportunities to serve you by serving others. Many times we have thought only of our own wants and desires and ignored the needs of others. Help us to truly understand the commandments to love you with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind. Let us care for our neighbors, both far and near. Bring us back to your loving light, for we ask these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Words of Assurance. In the midst of our darkness and ignorance, the bright light of God's love shines through our healing, our anguish, souls. Rejoice, beloved of God, for God's love and forgiveness are given to you this day. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to do our tithes and offering. And I'm also asking once again, everyone to put aside something special in honor of breast cancer awareness month this month. Amen. So we're taking up a special offering for that. And so we're going to sing, give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. <laughs>
piece then. The money collected today um, will be given to the Shepherd family, the Breast Cancer Awareness Funds. Amen? Amen. Please stand. <laughs> Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you, God, for the miracles that you're doing here, right here at the corner of Bedford and Rogers. We thank you, God, that we are indeed a mainstay in the community. So, God, we bring back before you, oh God, this small offering. We ask that you receive it, that you bless it, that you multiply it. And we're also praying, oh God, for, for the, the donations that are going to be pouring in, oh God, for breast cancer awareness. Father, we are praying, oh God, God, for that money, that special offering. We ask, oh God, that you use it, oh God, for your glory, that, that the research that they have to do, that they'll be able to indeed find a cure. So God, we present this small offering to you. Bless it, multiply it, increase it, so we can further do your work here in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And, and as a reminder, we have our electronic giving via Zelle, and that is Bethalum2 at yahoo.com. We also have Sister Lanny's address that you can also send your tithes and offering to uh, 286A Albany Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11213. And so I, I, I forgot to mention that we're still collecting our contributions from our church anniversary on last Sunday. So please continue to do that if anyone has not as yet given um, towards our church anniversary. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So we're about uh, the close of our service. And so please remember tomorrow, if you can make it to come out and to the viewing service from 10 a.m. to 12 noon at Union United Methodist Church and the funeral service will be right after at 12 noon. Amen. Okay. Do I have uh, anyone want to say anything else? Did I miss out anything? Just double check in before I close out. All right. Okay, praise God. Praise God. Our closing hymn, we have a story to tell the nations. In number 569. <laughs>
Amen. Amen. Come, come, Sister Allison. I just have, I forgot to mention it. Sister Bavon had prepared some uh, goodies for us to go. So when you lead the children, on behalf of the children, amen. So thank you, children, for preparing those goodies for us. Um, so please take one bag when you leave out the sanctuary. Take it to go. Amen. Okay. So Allison. Okay. Amen. Amen. Uh, I don't, don't want to start crying. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Allison. And, and I pray that God continue to strengthen you and uh, Sister Shepherd during this difficult time. Amen. 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 Receive the benediction. The pathway is open before you this day. It is a path of peace and hope brought to others by God's mighty love and wondrous blessings. Go in peace, bringing hope to all that you meet. Go, blessed ones, to serve God all your days. Amen. <laughs> Please be seated for a moment of silent meditation.